So welcome everybody. Um, we are week 195, right, Jim? Something like that? 196, Andrew. 196. Yeah. Um, welcome back, everybody. And uh, we got a great, great one today. Um, exciting, uh, Jim. I'm going to let you and Michelle kind of drive the beginning of this one because it has to do with your cool rules challenge. Um, so Michelle, if you could uh, bring up uh, the PowerPoint and we'll get right on into it here. And uh, hopefully we get all of our, our winners on with us too, right, Michelle? Uh, yes, I, I checked. They're all here. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Nice. All right. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Oops, I'm not giving anything away. You're um, good. You're you're are. Are. <laughs> all right. Can you, I, I can, I think I, you may be able to see some of it because you're, yeah, you can see your next slide. You can see your next slide. Yeah, oh, you can see your presenter mode. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. do, okay, so we'll just do. Right from start. Right from start. Okay, it's different. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Gotcha. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We almost All have right. to count the bag. <laughs> they couldn't see it. It was too small. <laughs> All right. Oh. Go ahead, Jim. You want to take it away? Yeah, so Michelle and I are going to announce the winners of the Cool Rules Challenge. Uh, this is version two. So you may remember last year we did a Cool Rules Challenge when Respond came out. Uh, ben Jones was a big winner of that contest. What we wanted to do this time was have the challenge centered around unifying and creating rules that incorporate unify with respond. We had some really great submissions and it was difficult coming up with winners. So what we're gonna to do today is we're going to announce the winners in succession. And then we're actually going to play for you the videos that were submitted around the rules. So you can actually learn uh, what the, the rule is and, and how it was submitted. And then we'd like to talk to each winner briefly about the inspiration behind the rule. So with that said, Michelle, you wanna get right into it? Sure, oops, let's start with our first, oh. Okay, third place, we'll start with third place was most impactful rule. Okay, right. so again, Michelle, I think you testify, right? This was difficult to yes. come up with three winners because they were a bunch that were really, really good. Yes. A lot of them um, were very impactful too. So this was, this was a tough yeah. one. And I was really impressed with some of the quality of the video that were actually submitted as well to the point where we might want to start working with some of you folks on creating some videos for Sasserts going forward. Uh, so Michelle, you want to announce third place? Sure. Third place. And I hope I'm going to say this right is Louis Gunessi, this is what, how I'm going to say it, but I hope he's here. Louis, are you here from Cayenne Corp? I thought I saw him come in. Yes. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> well, congratulations. Uh, I'm going to have to stop sharing to show the video, so bear with me for a minute. Um, Louis, I personally loved the editing in this, uh, which we're going to show you in just a second get out of this. All right. This one is yours. So Louis, while Michelle's bringing that up, can you um, talk us through the inspiration behind your role? Louis, you there? He's here. I don't know, maybe he doesn't have a microphone. Yeah, he looks like he's on mute. All right, well, let's we can we can play it. I have it up. Okay. Here. Oh, I'm okay. here. You oh, there you are. You're there. Yes. Hi okay. There, yes. Fantastic, okay. Lewis. So, congratulations, third prize. Uh, Michelle, can we remind everybody what the third prize? Uh, the third prize is one thousand dollars. Okay. Nice. Yes. Nice. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations for that. All right. Nice. Let's take let's take a look at your rule. Okay. So, oh, you're yeah. gonna play the video. Do you want me to yeah. explain it first? I'm gonna I'm gonna play it. And then okay, you can explain. got it. Perfect. 
Can you hear that? A SAS rootkit allows threat attackers to create malware that lives within a SAS application. Yes, Michelle. Okay. Which can infiltrate and maintain access to a user's account while going on notice. This includes creating forwarding rules through a terminal script and being able to hide them from the user interface like a rootkit. One of the ways this could occur would be in the form of an email where the user clicks on the link which grants access to the SAS application on the email account. The OAuth 2.0 mechanism simplifies the process of authentication and authorizes a fine-grained delegation of access rights. OAuth doesn't share password data, but instead uses authorization tokens to prove an identity between consumers and providers to provide an authorization flow for apps. Third-party apps could be a valuable tool to a business, but can also be an executable file and a big threat. Here is a walkthrough of the rule you can create, which can help you prevent this. Since the SaaS application integration is the first step before the threat actor can go on notice, using this condition, anytime a SaaS integration is accomplished, the response will be to block the sign-in, expire the account logins, change the user password. Mm -hmm. Somebody's trying to log in as me, I think. Okay. Sorry about that. This, I think it's Amy. Is that it? <laughs> All right. Uh-oh, it stopped. Okay. No, what just happened? That'd be awesome. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Lewis, do you want to talk us through this? <laughs> yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so with the um, inspiration behind the rule really is we did have an attack for one of our clients. I think about two weeks before the the challenge was announced and we were trying to look for a way to remediate the issue. And from what we saw um, through the logs, through the real-time alerts, it was due to a SaaS integration. That's how they got in. The user clicked on the link and they managed to, to create some forwarding rules on there. Um, so that's pretty much yeah where where we found the um, where we could remediate this kind of issue basically. Awesome. Well, Lewis, it's a great rule, and it's really a kick-ass video. <laughs> the video is awesome. <laughs> really well done. Thanks, yeah, Thanks for that. Was, yeah, we might reach yeah. out to you for some uh, video editing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a simple one. It wasn't anything uh, anything crazy. That was great, though. It was it was very engaging. I loved it. All right. Nice. Lewis, which SaaS right. application? What was that? Which SaaS? You mentioned there was a which SaaS application? Which it was uh, Thunderbird, and it's the same same um, app that I use to to kind of. Uh, get into my own account using Thunderbird to create that role. Hmm. Interesting. And so they use Red Actor used it? Just sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So you're able you're able to hold the 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 login active basically with Thunderbird. Then from there you can run the the terminals and just kind of go under the radar. It's it's I just wanted to point out Chip and I were talking, I don't know if you heard us before you got on, but it's just fascinating the amount, you know, the term living off the land. Right, threat actors continually using tools that we use, yeah. right? Because they go undetected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, well, Lewis, great stuff. Thank you for submitting, and again, congratulations, Simone. Jim, can I that. can I pipe in for just a sec? Yeah. Um, I love that rule. Obviously, I love the video too. I did make a, a note to, to you guys that might be considering using it. If you think it's a little heavy handed to say no to any SaaS integrations, you can use the conditions inside of the respond module to specify that if this description does not contain words that apply to the um, third party applications you might be okay with that are authorized for use, you can go ahead and remove those from those rules. So you can say, take these actions if there's a SaaS integration that does not contain SAS alerts or MailChimp or anything that you've vetted clearly that you're comfortable with to tune this down to only hit things that you haven't authorized. And I think that's an exceptionally important uh, aspect of the rule. And I think Lewis kind of teed us up for making that something that'll work for anyone, how, whatever they've got approved or, or not approved. Yeah, got it. And then also at the end of the video, I'm not sure if, you, if you've seen that part, but it does mention you can actually cre uh, create those um, those whitelist applications or whatever in the G Suite or Office 365 backend as well. Great. Thanks again, Lewis. Enjoy that $1,000. All right. Thanks for that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Michelle.
Let's uh, right. hit number two here on the right. list. We should go back to sharing. All right. So what it, gonna, where are we? Third place. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give anything away. Second place is most creative rule. And the prize for that is going to be $2,000. Um, do you have anything to say about this one, Jim? <laughs> it's another really good one from yeah. an organization that is leveraging respond at they're at the top of the list of the organizations within our portfolio of 800 msps they're leveraging respond um and it's really exciting to see and uh it's just a really creative role in our opinion so um let's uh, i i love that it's already caught a whole bunch of threat actors as you can as you'll see in the video but so those are the second place winner congratulations to jake tarrant is that how you say it from logically congratulations jake thank you here i think you're here i think i saw you coming yeah there's Jake's jake here. Yep. congratulations <laughs> jake thank you can you guys hear me yep yeah we can hear you great job thank you all right let's and, take uh, a look and, and buddy pitt is there with him too i can see buddy right right there so hey buddy but i just want to highlight the combination of Buddy and Jake over at Logically, what a dynamic duo those guys are. And, um, you know, talking about unsung heroes inside an organization, inside an MSP, um, we just, a fantastic partnership with those guys. And again, when we thought about the way MSPs and, and their big, large private equity backed MSP, they've got a ton of users on right now. When we envisioned how people will use Respond, we they are basically the poster child. So great job, Jake and buddy. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Take a look at his rule. I did test it. I could hear the sound. So fingers crossed. Hi there, my name is Jake, I'm with Logically, and I want to show off two of the rules we've been using in SAS alerts um, to be able to catch threat actors live. Um, between a combination of these two rules, within the last month, uh, we have caught anywhere, I think between 10 and 12 email breaches so far, and the month isn't over yet. So I want to show off each one and show you what it does and walk you through them. So the first one here is called the risky inbox rules. Now, based on threat actor activity, what we've seen when they try to compromise or when they compromise an account is that they try to redirect mail flow so the user can't see um, emails being received back to them. So for this case, when an email rule is enabled um, or a forwarding rule is changed, where it contains RSS for like the RSS feeds, that's a folder they commonly hide it in. Um, or where the description of the inbox rule has a period, a dash, or sorry, an underscore, or a dash, will send us an alert on this. What we've seen is often these threat actors will try to hide these rules, <clears throat> sorry, with um, very nondescript meanings or just single characters. So in this case, um, you know, we've caught probably about five of our threat actors using this and been able to jump in. So if we come to the uh, the seven days of trigger activity, we can see we actually just caught one about 20 minutes ago. We were able to respond to that client and get ahead of it. Uh, here's another one from Valentine Enterprises. And I think what's actually very interesting, here's, here's Teresa Ferguson, is that all of these rules or all of these um, alerts that we've gotten have been true positives. Um, from this rule, at least in the last week, <clears throat> we have not gotten <clears throat> one false positive. Now, walking over to our other rule, inbox created outside of proof location. What this rule does, oops, is if you come into edit here, if a user logs in outside of proof location, so in our case, if they log in outside of the country, we expect them to be operating in, and they create a forwarding rule, or they change a forwarding rule, it will alert us on this. So what we often see is that threat actors will log into an account um, pretty carelessly without a VPN, and we'll get that trigger that a login's happened from outside the US. 
we know that it's suspicious in nature, malicious in nature, they go ahead and change the forwarding. Because once again, it goes back to the redirection of mail flow. So if I come in here the last seven days of triggers, um, it's pretty close to the other rule we saw. But either way, all of these rules, um, with the exception of some of our administrator ones, because they operate in the Philippines, but for any user accounts we've seen this rule happen on, um, they've been legit for the most part. So this allows us to get ahead of anything um, like that. See here, we've probably caught about five or six people with this rule in the last um, week or so, or five or six email compromises. So those are the two rules we've been using to um, effectively fight off threat actors and business email compromises. Hey, thank you for the time. Yes. Awesome. Great work. So Jake, you want to just talk about the inspiration a little bit? Yeah, sure. So you guys could probably tell it was allergy season when I, when I made that video. So sorry for all the awkward <laughs> pauses. Um, <laughs> so where what happened there is that we set up SaaS alerts for our clients. We were monitoring the logs, but we weren't sure exactly what we were monitoring for. So what happened is we had a, a actually we had a client get compromised, unfortunately. And we said, okay, let's go back through logs and SAS alerts. And by the I started to look and said, what can we match up in these rules or what activity can we see we can write rules for? So we took two live incidents. We saw they were logging in from foreign countries. They're making these mailbox rules with very non-descriptive names. And we just started to build the rules from there. And before you know, we had, I think we've had now 20 successful uh, breaches stopped with those two rules in the past month or two. <clears throat> that so that's is where that awesome. came from. That is awesome, awesome work. Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, Jake, Jake question. You know, I, I, I know of logically um, through my, uh, through Michelle, and I know she's gone, but you, I know you guys are big. Um, and I have a question to you and our buddy. And again, it's not asking you for exact metrics, but when you look at EDR, MDR versus BEC and, you know, your quote unquote SaaS attacks that you're seeing, you know, 26 in the past two months, what percent are, you know, are you seeing EDR, MDR fire versus SaaS? Does that make sense? Like high level? Yeah. Class? Almost none, I would say. All of these, all the SaaS ones seem to originate from a password being compromised in some way, single factor authentication being used and no actual compromise to the client's, you know, physical environment. So I almost lump them in two separate categories. Totally. I was just saying like, yeah. you know, for every hypothetically 10, you get over here, BEC, mm -hmm. SAS type credential attack. How many EDR, MDR? Like alerts, I know what you're saying. Yeah, like that are real true positive. Give yeah. Or yeah. I, I would say in the EDR, MDR world, we see a lot of, things that are detections i mean i could say yeah they're true positives but they're low risk right 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 uh, the impactful type stuff you know the coupon clipper toolbar the you know like that the, the marketing yeah. stuff the free pdf reader that's bundled with crap in it so we see a ton of that type of stuff in the edr world yeah, um, but like so, something real like relative to this percentage wise what would you say it is i would say it's probably close to a 10 to 1 in SaaS applications today that, you know, if we did 20 in the last month of these, we, we probably had two real um, incidents, mostly like you guys were talking about early on this call with legitimate remote support tools involved, um, tech support scams that, you know, user lets someone into their machine. Um, you know, even with privilege access management and stuff in place, some of those tools will run within the user profile. And uh, so we're seeing more and more of that type of stuff happening right now. And I think that's going to grow over the next few months because there's some recent um, major data breaches that hit the markets in the last week or two. Uh, so we'll probably see a little uptick in that, but but yeah, definitely way more in the SaaS environments. Yeah. Did you see this? I'm just going to show this real quick and we'll come back to this when I present, but buddy, did you see this? Is that what you're referring to early on? Um, this is So this is from the DBI. Uh, I'm just going to show this, Jim, to the yeah. importance of SaaS alerts. Yeah. So in DBIR, like, I mean, you're just seeing like all other in terms of, you know, um, intrusion. Yeah. This is where it is all right now. Yeah. 
Well, I think the business email compromise in particular um, by past, past ransomware and profitability for threat actor groups last year. So yeah. it's, there's no, <laughs> it, it makes sense that they're migrating into this area uh, as well. Yeah, just really, really interesting how quick things are changing um, and uh, where, where, where the quote unquote action is. So great job. I think it's, I think you guys did a fantastic job on this. Yeah, so. 20 BCs in a month. Well done, guys. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Enjoy the $2,000. Awesome. Thank Are you, you going to split it? Uh, I want to. Hopefully, buddy. Hopefully, buddy will. Hopefully, will take it. I was going to let Jake have it, but there you go. We'll see. Uh, again, two unsung heroes. You can see that on display right there. Uh, okay. So, uh, Michelle, let's get to number one. All right. Here we go. All right. First place, best overall rule. This yes. rule won, I mean, for a variety of reasons, but in my opinion, it, they used Unify to create some really good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So Jim, do you have anything you want to say about it before I announce? Well, I'll, look, all these rules are great and it, it was really difficult because we had a lot of really good entries. Um, but as you said, Michelle, like th this individual really embraced the unified piece of this, uh, which kind of pushed it over the, the top. So um, someone's asking, what is Unify? Yes. Where so, is the account manager? Yeah. <laughs> um, so Mars, okay. how long you been with us? Um, oh, it hasn't been on board yet. Okay, so that explains it. So Unify is functionality that we released back in April that essentially correlates the data by side data from RMM applications, and then correlates that with the user data we naturally get in SAS alerts, and we unify it into one view. Um, and that allows you to then create respond rules um, to really zero in on what is going on in your customers' environments. Mm -hmm. So that's unified. Yes. So okay. So without it. further ado, Yes, well, congratulations to Max Thornton from LSR Tech. Max will win uh, three thousand dollars and one thousand dollars in MDF funds for LRS. That's yes. that's a big a big take right there. Uh, Max, are you here? Yes, I am. I hear you. I don't see you. Max, okay, congratulations. congratulations. Way to go, Max. Let me and by the it. way, I, I see Ben Jones on here. Ben, ben Jones, as we mentioned before, was a big winner last time. And he's got to be an honorable mention for this time around uh, because he submitted some really good stuff again. Um, but um, we, uh, after going through it, um, we just had to obviously bring it down to three. It was a tough one. This was tough. Yeah, it was. All right, let's take a look at Max's submission. Hello, my name is Max Thornton, and this is my submission for the Cool Rules Challenge in May of 2023, specifically for getting a rule that works with Respond and Unify. So I work at, uh, at you know, a company I'm with, LSR Tech. We, I wanted to get something that applies to situations we see and sort of situations we see in the past and, you know, what we can anticipate with the new features afforded by Unify. So with previously, we had to have arbitrary thresholds for what would be considered malicious behavior out of character. You know, say 25 downloads of documents in an hour might be a threshold. But now, since we can map devices, we can now expect what behavior is done on what devices and take actions, um, you know, when those behaviors are enacted on an unexpected device, especially in a world today where there can be all sorts of weird account compromises, such as, you know, an already authorized token being grabbed from a phishing email. Uh, so say someone does that, loads it up on their computer. What this is doing here is that it's checking for anything I would consider, you know, daily activity, but that could otherwise be suspicious. So suddenly creating shared links, downloads, sending email forwarding, all the things that in all honesty I would want to do if I had suddenly act, if I was a bad actor and I wanted 
to you know mess with someone's account and get their information after compromising their login token. So previously, like I said, we'd have thresholds. Now we only need any instance of that when it's on a non-mapped device. So with our user base, they have predefined custom company workstations, and they shouldn't be signing in and doing their business from personal computers or from any other computers. And if they have a new device, we're the ones to set them up. So this behavior is not something that they do on anything other than maybe a mobile device. So that's why we have the mobile exception here for those small cases. But if it's not on a map device and it's not a mobile device, and say there's a compromised token, will trigger for any of this behavior, downloads, you know, even just opening files, maybe you're taking screenshots, they don't want to trigger download sensors, anything to exfiltrate data or to otherwise intercept emails. So you can see on here, I have a demo user set up. I already got the rule to trigger. What you can see below these lower ones here are that I did this on the computer that the user is mapped to and it didn't trigger any rules. But when I then signed in on a computer next to it, a uh, computer that it was that the demo user was not mapped to, it immediately triggered the respond rule. And I apologize, I didn't show you what the actual uh, response is. I currently have it set to send a text alert to uh, one of our business phones and to block sign-ins and expire account logins. Of course, you can expand this. You could make it do change user passwords, but as far as I'm concerned, this will lock down an account while we have time to evaluate what happened. And, you know, say some user did something they should have, they tried to sign in on, you know, a random, you know, their uh, partner's computer while on vacation, then we don't have to worry about resetting MFA passwords if it's just that. But in the meantime, we'll have made sure their account's protected. So this is my idea for the submission. It really is just taking, you know, several good ideas I've seen around and stuff that we were trying to do for Unify and now utilizing Unify to really answer the question, which for me was, how do you know when, you know, what's a good arbitrary limit? And the beauty is that there doesn't have to be arbitrary limits anymore. It's just, are they where they, are they on the device they should be? If so, they're good. If not, we lock it down. Awesome. Great. Max, you want to add any commentary? Uh, I don't have much to add. I just was really trying to identify that. You know, my, what I love for SAS alerts is being informed. But when you introduce respond, I'm like, what can we, you know, do to respond to an action? What if it happens while we're asleep? You know, worst case scenario, 1 a.m. Christmas morning or something. Mm -hmm. And having this on here where, you know, we have lots of clients that only do business on their designated business computers that we can map to. We use Ninja and it's explicit policy in their business that they shouldn't be doing work outside of those computers. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything going on outside those computers, you know, stuff that might fly under the radar, like I didn't put the password reset in there because that throws flags on its own. If I got into someone's account, the first thing I would do is exfiltrate data, not try and just take over because I'd assume someone would catch me eventually. So I want to lock so lock them down the moment they're going for data. Great. Well Max, congratulations. You got a <laughs> um that's a big that's a big win. So yeah, I wasn't expecting that. En enjoy the prize. <laughs> very well Jim. very much deserved. Yeah. Jim can I just yeah. ask Max something Max so yeah with your with your respond rule Max you're basically isolating that device aren't you? Yes. That's pretty big, Jim, because if you think about it from an IR perspective, right, that's really what we want to do is limit blast radius, right? So it's, it's a, a fantastic work, Max. Yes, it really is. And as Ben just said in chat, you are joining a very elite group. You know, you're now up there with the likes of Ben Jones as the number one winner of uh, a cruel rules challenge. And, um, ben, <laughs> and Ben is on vacation today, coming to us from Bush Gardens. So ben, thanks for joining. 
Um, that's that's loyalty right there, my friend. I, I'm dedicated. <laughs> I'm dedicated. Exactly. And, and for exactly. those for those that um, feel like you missed out on this one, don't worry. This is going to be an annual thing annual. That we do in, in Q2. So uh, we're going to be doing foot rule challenges uh, for for many years to come. So just remember who the winners are, how they got here, and uh, and what their videos look like. Yeah. Jim, why aren't I have a question for you? Yeah. Um, have you considered you at Chip, the marketing team, um, talking about you know this as a as a sore? I mean, when, with what Max just did, right? Based on you know a detection, based on you know something that was nefarious, isolating a host, right? That's that's security orchestration. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're doing is. some. You're doing something based on on something nefarious, and and now again, are you you know throwing APIs and you know pulling in other tools? That, that's potentially down the road, but you are you know doing something that is uh, in lockstep with the best practice, you know, an incident response best practice. So I'm just curious, you know, where where you might where you might go with that. Chip, you want to comment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we do talk about that. It, it's it's become pretty common on um, on calls with particularly prospective partners that they ask that very question. We know they'll say, "Well, you know, you're you're monitoring, alerting, and responding. Aren't you guys a sore?" Um, and in general, my answer is, "Yeah, we are." You know, we don't market ourselves that way because a lot of the community that we market to isn't necessarily familiar with that um that terminology and we try to break things down into their constituent parts and make it very very easy to digest but um in every in every true sense of the word of the definition that is that is certainly a way to describe sas words yeah it's pretty impressive you get really good stuff yeah good. All, for 80, all for 80 cents yeah andrew all for 80 cents for i mean that's and most a lot of the folks on this call are paying a lot less because they're early adopters I've got a follow-on question for Max, actually, because I'm very interested in in the um, in this rule that he built, and that is Max. Um, obviously, without divulging any customer information, what's the industry vertical of of the particular client or clients that for which you built you know this particular rule set? Because it's becoming increasingly rare that a company policy is that a user is only expected to connect from a particular device or a particular IP address. And I know we have some folks that are regularly attend this call that work in some very specific industry verticals. And I'm, I'm interested in your comment on that. Uh, for us, we're seeing it mostly with like construction related companies and then um, like shipping, I'd say. Um, just and typically it's people that are more security minded ones that in my experience it's easier when you start talking about mfa or conditional access not to get into too much other stuff but start talking about security they're actually receptive they take that stuff seriously and so they won't be able to know exactly what device their employees are doing the work from so that they you know know that potentially big funds aren't going where they shouldn't max can i ask ask him something chip sure go ahead yeah, Max, are you familiar with the Maritime and Ports ISAC? I'm not. Um, so this is the information, you know, there's different information sharing and analysis centers, right? You have the biggest is the FFI, FFI, FS ISAC, the financial services, the next is healthcare, but the Maritime and Ports is a big one too. And I know the chair, the director there, her name is Sher, I'm drawing a blank, but it's, I, I've worked with her before. We've had her on the cyber call. I'd love to make an intro to you because I'm certain that your customers or some of them are part of the maritime and ports if they're in shipping. Um, and um, I think it'd be really cool for you to share with them and then have more exposure to that community, share with them what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And obviously, today we, we highlighted three winners, right? Andrew and Michelle. But we've got a lot of quote unquote winners in this community because 
we've got a lot of folks that are leveraging this tool to, to really protect their customers in a way that hasn't been done before. And when we set out, you know, to do this, well, to, to build SaaS alerts, this was, this was our why. Like why we exist is to help MSPs during this transition from, you know, a device-centric approach to cybersecurity to a user-centric approach. And it's just, it's heartwarming to see this community come together and, and do such great work. Um, and taking it to steps that we never even, you know, thought people were going to be able to take it to, quite honestly. It's, 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 it's awesome, Jim. I mean, it's yeah. really cool to see the engagement. So there's a lot of unsung heroes on this call in this community right now that are doing fantastic things for their MSPs and their end customers. And I wish there were ways, different ways that we could, we could highlight them. Yeah. So, um, so that's it. Michelle, right. Andrew, that, 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 that's a cool well, challenge. Yeah, congratulations. That's everybody. Thank you, everyone who submitted. And thank you to our judges on our team. We had uh, Lee, Ron, uh, Anthony, Amanda, and Ryan. So thank you to them as well. Yes. So, and Ben, thanks for joining from your vacation in Bush Gardens. For sure. Happy to be here. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh, okay. So I guess we can um, move to the next topic on the agenda. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the next is going to be Michelle. Do you want to go first? Or do you want to go before Leron? Um, I'll go first. I just have really one thing. Um, we did a webinar earlier this week on prospecting, and we gave out a toolkit that we put together. So I just wanted to share that with everyone here. Uh, let's just drop that into the chat. And you can go there to get um, a, a sales playbook, a prospecting slide deck that you can use the uh, pricing calculator and the SASE report, they're all in one place. So if you have any questions, you can definitely reach out to us. You can reach out to your account managers. Um, but yeah, we hope you'll use it. Awesome. All right. <laughs> and then Michelle, let's bring on Liron uh, if we could. Sure. Liron, are you site. here? I'm here, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to share my screen shortly. So what I'm going to be covering today is first, we've released the Data RMM integration, as some of you guys may have seen, have seen the products. So big congratulations to Adam and his team for all the hard work that they put in and getting that out there. The other piece that I wanted to cover is to show you guys some some new filters that we have released for respond so i'm going to be sharing my screen and show you guys what that looks like and so Leron, Leron, if i could just i want to highlight something we released unify on april 19th today is june 15th and there was a lot of folks on that web on that launch it was 200 folks on that that, and a lot of them were saying, hey, please give us Data RMM. Data RMM, we hadn't worked with before, but credit to our team for turning it around so fast and also credit to the Data team for working with us so quickly after they saw the need from, from this community. So credit goes to Data as well for working with us to make sure that we can get this happen. Those of you that are on Enable, they have not moved. So they have not been working with us. So if, if you are using Enable, please continue to pressure them to get their API where it needs to be so we could actually integrate with Unify. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. So I've created this new rule and this rule was inspired by a call that we had with with one of our partners and i call this outside approved location plus malicious authentication and this was drawn from a real world scenario right so what we want to do with these real world scenarios is we want to look at the types of 
malicious events that we get maybe before it's too late and we take a look at them and we say how can we have prevented this from occurring in the first place so what we have going on here is we have a login that is outside of an approved location i'll talk about the filters shortly right we have one of those within 24 hours and then we have a normal authentication success so in this particular use case this partner was specifically asking us we know what country this is happening from. We even know the city. We give us the country and give us the city so we can go specifically looking for these particular threats. So if you have that level of detail, right? We've added country, we've added city, and we've also added what's called region. And we probably want to put like state in parentheses here. In the United States, region from our data is state. In other places, it could be a province or in the United Kingdom, it could be like Scotland, for instance, or Wales. Um, but what I'm saying here is, if if I have observed a bunch of outside approved location logins that take place in Lagos, Nigeria, I can now go and I can filter for those things. And notice that we say you have to use the country code here and the city name. And if you are tracking this against a real event, so for example, I randomly picked this one in ours, right? If you go to the uh, critical medium low or analyze screen, click the magnifying glass, you're going to see the, the country location and the city. So you can just copy and paste those in if you are seeing a consistent pattern of attacks from a particular location, right? So I say Nigeria, Lagos. And then the next thing I wanna go looking for is an authentication success that follows this, but it's not just any authentication success. It is an authentication success where we have all of this data right, right here that comes through as location is anonymous, location is a threat or a bogon or a data center or Tor or proxy, right? So what I can do is I can now say, if the IP threat anonymous is equal to true, right? So if I have an authentication success where any one of these things is true, right? So if it's anonymous or a bogon, and we've added a description here, or it's a known abuser, or it's a known attacker, or it is a proxy, or it's Tor, or it is VPN. You can obviously, I wanted to kind of show all of the capabilities here. I probably wouldn't have all these on, I probably have known attacker, proxy, Tor, and VPN in this case, right? But now we know that there's a pattern where you bad actors are using VPNs. Uh, they're they're using they're logging in from outside an approved location in countries where getting access to servers is cheaper, easier, and faster, and then they're VPNing into the country of origin for the company or the user and then getting in and trying to slip under the radar. So in that type of scenario, because I have VPN enabled here, and if that IP address is a registered, is, is registered as a known and recognized as a VPN, this is going to flag it. And then what I've done here is I've expired all the logins, blocked the sign in and made this into a manual approval type of rule. So, thanks to partner feedback, right, and real world examples in order to help catch these things. We've added country, city, and quite a few of the IP address fields that we get from our data. Do we have any questions about this? Liron, while we're waiting on questions, I think um, we have to give a hat tip again to Buddy uh, and Jake on this. This was actually direct feedback from a call that we had with the two of them where, um, you know, Buddy chimed in and said, by the way, you know, with all this analysis stuff that we do with our large data set, we've noticed that there's really a strong correlation, uh, particularly between these IP threat um, characterizations that we've added in, um, that when we see them, it, it's much more likely to, to, to eliminate the possibility of a false positive. In other words, it's much more likely to be a true uh, compromise event. 
So they asked us, you know, you guys have this data. We know you have it. So why don't you put it in as filters? There is a simple answer to that, which is we try to balance the UI that we build between being very busy and complicated and being simple and easy to use. Um, but Buddy and Jake made the case to us that, you know, even though this dramatically expands the list of filter options, it's still worthwhile. So thanks again to the to to Buddy and Jake who, who were our Winner for the cool rules challenge they kind of got a, a double billing and i think they deserve a little recognition on it thanks and i, I do want to let you know i really appreciate you putting the, those in there for us and when they came in uh, jake created a rule uh based off of the the nigeria lagos nigeria uh part and so what we were noticing was that there's an automated process and that seems to be running primarily out of, out of N N lagos nigeria and that would kind of validate the credentials and then the VPN IP would come in to create the rules. So now what we've been able to do is instead of waiting for the threat actor to come in and create the rules, um, Jake caught one last night that was just the login from Lagos, Nigeria. That didn't belong. So we were able to get even a step in front of that, um, the rules that, that we described today on the call. So um, thanks for getting that in and, and thanks, Jake, for getting that active so fast. Yeah, no problem. I gotta say, when we called the customer up saying, hey, we saw one nefarious login from Nigeria, there's no email rules, there's no actual damage to the account, there's no phishing email sent out, they're very appreciative of that. Yeah. The, the other piece that is is great about this for everyone in the community, and Buddy and Jake, I'm sure you recognize it already, is the, um, the forensic log tail that you're creating to be able to demonstrate for someone exactly what happened, which you so often need. Because you always have skeptics when you're coming to them and saying, hey, you know, we you had an account that, that got hacked or God forbid there's an actual monetary loss and you have to have the data. And this level of detail um, and, and detail in the respond module itself really provides a lot of uh, powerful data to help your client with insurance claims and you guys stay out of the line of fire. Um, so, you know, definitely encourage everyone to to use these additional filters to strengthen the granularity of your logs. All right. Thanks for. Oh, Andrew, I think or is Andrew saying? Yeah, Andrew, you, yeah. Yeah. Again, Jake, Buddy, and and Chip and team, fantastic. I mean, you know, when you think about what's going to occur, you know, after a breach attorney gets assigned, if God forbid, you know, something did get through, right? And you guys are doing everything you can. Not only can you show do care, but as soon as they call in, you know, defer right? You're going to be able to literally hand them exactly what happened. And I mean, that's, it's really, really well done. And uh, it, it's, it's awesome to see. Yeah, Andrew, you yeah. know how far this, this platform has come. There's a lot of folks on this call that have been, been with us from the very beginning that know how far this platform has come. We still have, what is it? I don't know, like seven or eight months to write a boom in March mm -hmm. when we have an opportunity to get up on main stage and um, show everybody what we'll have accomplished by then with some real thought leadership around an aggregation, Andrew, of all of these things that we see people catching and, and how to create you know, rules and policies around stopping them, around SaaS applications. Like I am so pumped up this year more than ever for right of boom because we'll be able to share so much information that we're collecting well, i was telling chip it'll be cool because as you know we we create a journey there's no sales pitches but what's awesome about you guys is we're going to be looking at the, the verizon data breach report and so when chip's up there speaking to it he can actually pull you know a lot of data to literally show specifically you know how the threat actor is doing what they're doing mm. Exactly. I think for Red Boom, we should we should step forward uh, um, with the Sazzler's Cools Challenge winner and and have Max hand off a blue jacket for the blue team uh, to to the next winner. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like so so you're kind of recreating the master. master exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very well. Great stuff. Great stuff, Leron. Yeah. Did, does that mean Jake and 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 Matt uh, and Buddy got an extra two thousand dollars ship for this? Let's not, uh, get, let's not get carried away. Yeah, send it on over. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, 
They came up. They came up with a great suggestion, and we hustled to get it in. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Jake, remember, no more suggestions till the next contest. That's right. <laughs> oh, that <was> cool. <laughs> yeah, right. But now they're holding back. Yeah. Um. All right. Great stuff. Um. We run anything else on the product side? Nope. That's it. All right. Uh, okay. If I share. You gotta... All right, we only, we only, I, I had three in the news things that I wanted to talk about. Um, I'm going to, let me, where's my stuff here? Okay. I'm actually going to go to this one. Uh, just quick, Michelle, can you be my eyes on show of hands? Uh, buddy, you're mentioning VPN. Who's trying to get their customers off VPN? I'm just curious, so, you know, just a yes or no, uh, uh, you know, and trying to move more to something like, um, uh, you know, and I know this is a network, but like a network access control, whether it's AppGate, Centricom, Perimeter 81, who's trying to get their customers off VPNs? Anybody? In chat? I don't see any hands yet. Now I'm really concerned. Yeah, Thank you, one. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, there we go. Thank God people are trying to get them off VPNs. Okay. So I'm going to share. Um, they're off. Great, Scott. All they're right. Off. So, um, Ryan's bored, apparently. What's that? Ryan said he was half asleep. Uh, I don't know why. I might... Okay. So, did anybody see this directive just released uh, for CISA this week? Anybody? Yes. No. Um, here is something. There's a, a. I believe there's a bleepy. Computer. I believe there's a on it and I'll also send it out. But basically the government has said uh, to CISA, to all federal agencies, you shall get off all, shut down all inter internet facing devices, public inter internet facing devices. <laughs> I sent this to Chip. He's like, what, Chip, what was your comment, Chip? 10 years too late? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, you know, the reason I wanted to talk about this, because we only have a few minutes left, is um, to me, when you can point to, you know, you might have been trying to get off, oh, you know, we don't want to move to, again, said solution. Um, we don't want, you know, our VPN's good enough, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is pretty, um, uh, to me, uh, good thought leadership. And, and you know, Jim, we talk a lot about... Um, Challenger sale. Challenger sale. You know, yes. hey, you know, if, you know, you know, we, we've been talking to you about Jim, talking about getting off VPN for some time now. You know, it would behoove me, you know, be, I would be negligent to tell you that the federal government has ordered all federal wow. agencies off VPNs. And, you know, I wanted to, you know, take some time to talk to you about why this is happening. Note, by the way, this does not apply to cloud uh, as well. So Anybody, anyone thoughts on this? Anybody struggling and could this be helpful to you all? Because they then move into why zero trust architecture and um, how the government is, ra you know, rapidly, as we know, just like CMMC, rapidly moving. Um, but this is good, uh, to me, good thought leadership to get in front of uh, your customers. Any, any thoughts on this? So... Uh, you know, I'll just offer the while we're waiting for other folks to think of their thoughts that we often talk about sales tools um, on this call and how to leverage changes in the security architecture and the security posture of um, how MSPs and businesses should be running and what attackers are doing. This, I think, is another great opportunity to take to existing customers and prospects and make them aware of the amount of change that's going on. Um, there's got to be a lot of folks out there with legacy systems that are still using VPNs. They're still, I mean, this also covers, you know, file transfer protocol and, and websites that are HTTP and not HTTPS. Things that I think a lot of us take for granted that, you know, okay, the world doesn't work that way anymore, except we learn that it really does. And right. you use this kind of documentation coming out of the federal government to say, look, we should be examining your networks. Like if I, if I'm still an MSP, I'm using this kind of thing and I'm going to, to prospects that I'm saying, has anyone ever looked at this stuff for you to, to really find out if you're 
um, going to be compliant with the new standard that the federal government expects for itself. And they're on the front lines of cyber attacks. So there's got to be a reason for it. Let's take a look at it. Right. Yeah, really well said, Chip. Um, has anybody, you know, anybody struggled with that? You know, um, Buddy, you know, you guys obviously have a big customer base. Um, you know, I'm just curious, uh, you know, do you, do you get some pushback still from customers? Um, yeah, for sure. Anytime that we're changing something that's involving user behaviors is, is a challenge. And were you, are you with, um, the former Chris Chergwin group? Uh, I've, I've known Chris for many, many years up in Maine or, uh, where are you out of? I'm in out of, uh, Connecticut. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, this to me is a, as a, as a really important one that, you know, I, I, can't stress enough. I mean, just this week alone, I don't know if you guys have seen Fortinet yet again, um, plagued with vulnerabilities that, you know, for such a great firewall and networking company has become the Swiss cheese of, um, unfortunately, in the last few years of, of vulnerabilities. So again, you know, Jim, I, I got some other things I want to talk about, but you know, got an incredible, um, sassy call today and some great information for everybody. But Adam, you have your hand raised. Did you have anything you wanted to share? Or was that too, due to the question? Or he's high-fiving you, I don't know. Yeah, it's down now. Okay. All right, Jim. So we're at the top of the hour. Yeah. Uh, but wow, what a fantastic, um, really good stuff. Yeah, yeah really proud of everything and the partners should be really proud yes well congratulations again to all the winners thank you to all of you the community uh for pushing us and making sas certs the company that we are today and certainly giving us uh, the information and the um, guidance to to keep moving forward in a way that's going to be very helpful to all msps so thanks so much yeah, thank you. See you next week. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye.